When doing my job, there's nothing more satisfying than documenting an athlete who has been made into a cartoon character by the mainstream media. Really, it's a two-step process. First, gaining their trust, and then shedding light on who they really are. No modern football player has been put in a smaller box than the Pittsburgh Steelers' James Harrison. Until I hung out with him for a few days, I had no idea how thoughtful he is. He's become the Darth Vader of the sports world. So what exactly does that do for you? It's supposed to uh, deliver more oxygen into you by pressurizing the, the air. Until I spent time with this all-pro badass, I could swear the man had no teeth. Because I'd never seen his smile. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> so when uh, when uh, when you were getting cut early in your career, mm -hmm. did you consider other options? What, and what were they going to be? I was going to be an R&B singer, you know. But uh, what do you got? What, do you, what kind you know, of chops you got? You know, I don't. You know, I don't like putting it out there. You know, I don't like giving those samples neither because then I get calls from all these, you know, record labels. You know, producers and all that, I just get tired. I had to change my number, you know, last year because they was just calling me so much. So you got like a, a R. Kelly thing going on? Nah, I wouldn't say like that, but you know, it's, it's a mix of, of, of something like, you know, uh, maybe a mix like R. Kelly Usher or something like that. Maybe a little Bieber, you know. Bieber? You know, my kids like that, so I had to throw that in there. That little dude is making so much dough. Do you like Justin Bieber? Yeah, all right. All right, I ain't gonna sing none of his songs, though. Do you find yourself like in a in a? Right, well, it, let me do some things. <laughs> I was gonna say, but like when you're driving in the car, do you throw some Justin and Bieber on it and, and, and start I'm singing along? I'm myself. I'm liable to listen to anything. So, what is your favorite Justin Bieber lyric? I don't, I don't got no favorite Justin Bieber. Oh come on, James! You know when you're alone and nobody can see you in the car, and the windows are up. I have a plan like, you know how you, <laughs> you got the windows down or something and you rolling along, you know, and you uh, you listen to something that you wouldn't normally listen to. And you done turned it up, you cranking it, and then you get to a stoplight and somebody else beside you, and you pulling up on them so you start turning it down so they can't hear what it is. <laughs> what, what, like, <clears throat> like are you talking like Anita Baker kind of stuff no, or like man, something talking, really sensitive and sweet? What are we talking no, about here? Man, I'm talking like, like crazy stuff, man. I used to listen to like, Metallica every now and then, all that stuff. You turn it out down? Of the, out of the uh, out of the normal R&B pool. So you mean like white guy music? Yeah, man. Okay, I was gonna say, we're dancing around here, you know? Some, some Nickelback, man. What's so you turn the white guy music down when you get up yeah, to the light? Yeah, to the lights, slow, turn it down. Take off, turn it back up, all right. Usually when I show up, I would give someone like a handshake and a shoulder bump, right? Uh -huh. But I find myself with uh, with black guys not wanting to do that necessarily because I don't want them to think that I'm trying to... to trying to be down. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'd shown up and done that, what would that have been like little, for you? A little culture change. Yeah, well, no, for me, it, for me, it's not though. I mean, for me, that's the way I would normally, I would normally shake. But like, un until I get to know someone a little better, I don't want someone to think that. As, I, I, I don't want a black guy to think that I'm trying to, to roll a different way just to assimilate. I might not. Uh, might not give me the shoulder bump. I might not give you the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it depends. Sometimes you can't avoid it. So one of the things that, uh, you know, I was concerned about um, when I turned that um, that tape in, that you might not look at that like I did something that was correct. What were your thoughts? As far as, like, like some of the things he said, that yeah, yeah, they were they were messed up, but a lot of that stuff is everyday, like, little talk, you know, kill the head, the body of die, da, 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 da. That's like, that's, that's just, that's talk, that's... I wrote about like, yeah. I wrote about that as I felt it was just metaphor. It right. wasn't until he talked right. about knees and heads that I yeah. That that's I, a totally different story right there. <laughs> yeah. Did it almost make you want not to be a, not not to be associated with me? I'm not. I'm not worried about what people think about me because of my association, man. That's what you don't understand. Uh, how do you know to trust people? What what like I don't how do you trust get very many people? Anyway. I gather that. 
who are the people you do trust? I mean, in terms like of a lot of people that say I'll trust you until you give me a reason not to trust you. Well, see, I'm the total opposite. I'll trust. You. I'm not gonna trust you until you give me a reason to trust you. You trust me? Um, it's still up in the air. I would say I trust you more than I would anybody else that's in your position or that does your job right now. What's been like the deepest loss you've ever had? Uh, probably my grandmother. You close to your granny? Yeah. You ever cry? Do I? Everybody cries. <laughs> That's a foolish question. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, like, I, I, like one of the things I was talking with my film partner about the other night, and uh, actually, I was last night. And I was talking to me. Was um, like one of the things that like Kyle Turley is a is a is a main character in our film. And we liken him to Clint Eastwood. Like, we, you know, Kyle, uh, some of my friends call me the football player whisperer because guys will end up having conversations uh, with me about stuff and get some kind of emotional. And I was talking to my friend last night, and, like, Kyle's Clint Eastwood, so Kyle doesn't cry. And, um, and so last night uh, we're talking, and, uh, and, and uh, my friend's like, yeah, James is like Shaft. He's not going to cry. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm leaving James Harrison's... Uh, place um, in Arizona where he just is staying for six weeks to um, to work out where I was with him today and uh, this is the second time I've hung out with James and I think that he is uh, ex an exceptional dude I uh, today I just saw how hard he works and oftentimes people when they look at professional football players, they say a couple of different things. Oh, I would do that for free, and they get to play a game. But if you watch the way these guys train, you would understand that um, it goes a lot deeper than that. I know that you know, we're in a culture now that everything has to be so uh, immediate, uh, and what I do is over a long period of time. But I think that because the culture is so immediate, it really uh, takes away a lot of the humanity uh, and the essence of a lot of who these guys are. Uh, I have to report at the end of this that no, I did not get the, you know, lean in, lean in shoulder tap, but uh, as I shook his hand I said, next time I'm going to get the shoulder tap. But James Harrison is, uh, is a lot cooler than people who don't know him. I uh, think he is.